Boeing Starliner, a name you might have heard quite a lot these days. The excitement surrounding the launch on the 5th of June was held back when the news struck that the spacecraft was facing some issues. On Friday 22nd, it was officially announced that NASA and Boeing ruled out the 26th of June for the return of the Starliner spacecraft. The recent reports have suggested that they might have to extend the Starliner stay. The continuous delays have made people concerned about the mission. So what has been up with the Boeing Starliner recently and why has NASA delayed the return of the two astronauts? This is Space Technician signing on and let's find some answers. Here's a recap. NASA and Boeing have been working together on the Starliner project. On June 6, the capsule reached the ISS. It had taken off from Cape Canaveral, Florida one day earlier. The Starliner was actually launched at the ISS as part of the Orbital Flight Test 2 mission. This mission was supposed to be a milestone that would define the capabilities of the spacecraft. Since 1961, NASA has launched hundreds of humans into space. Although doing that is difficult, it should be as routine as possible for an organization like NASA, which adds to the unease surrounding the Starliner story over the past few weeks. The Starliner has already faced delays and was four years behind its actual schedule. The development for Starliner wasn't smooth sailing either. It was unable to reach its intended orbit on its first test flight in 2019, which was conducted without anyone on board. It was eventually discovered that the Starliner's thrusters were firing at the wrong moment due to an improperly calibrated onboard clock. That journey was unsuccessful for Starliner and NASA scheduled a second test flight also without crew members. Two of the Starliner's thrusters didn't fire as intended when it launched again in 2022. It docked with the space station after switching over to backup thrusters with success. Last year, when the astronauts were finally scheduled to launch, Boeing discovered two more problems with the spacecraft malfunctions with the parachute system, which would have allowed them to return to Earth, and potentially dangerous tape used to secure wires. Launch was pushed back until this past spring in order to fix both problems. After the initial problems faced, it was finally launched on the 5th of June this year, which was a month later than expected due to a countdown computer malfunction. Not long after, the spacecraft started facing some issues. When the spacecraft entered orbit and traveled all the way to the space station, four helium leaks were discovered along with issues in the propulsion system. Five of the spacecraft's engines began acting strangely as it got closer. Although the crew reached the space station without incident, their eight-day stay has already extended to 26 days and counting. And as the report suggested, they are still investigating the cause of the thruster problems and, more crucially, making sure Starliner can safely return its occupants. And hence, another delay was announced. But what is it with this recent delay? According to NASA, Boeing Starliner capsule is doing so well on its maiden man trip that it will probably be able to stay in orbit longer than the 45 days that was originally planned. It's rated to depart the International Space Station in an emergency and is in acceptable condition. However, as already known, Starliner's reaction control system thrusters encountered problems prior to docking with the ISS on June 6th, and many helium leaks have surfaced within the capsule. These are the issues that both NASA and Boeing are attempting to investigate. NASA officials emphasized on Friday, June 28th that progress has been made and that the helium leaks have been stabilized and all but one of the errant thrusters are rated for use to return to Earth. The test conducted on June 15th in orbit was unable to identify the underlying source of the problems. Starliner's RCS is known to contain 28 thrusters in total and only one of the five malfunctioning thrusters will be taken offline after undocking. And since the RCS is due for its service, the team has decided to use the extra time to understand what caused the issues. If Starliner is to execute six-month ISS rotation missions starting as early as 2025, this will be crucial for any modifications to the service module design that may be required. However, NASA believes Starliner must remain docked for longer than 45 days, which was the initial mission outer limit so that ground control personnel could perform the testing. The spacecraft appears to be operational for at least twice that duration, which is positive news. During the Friday teleconference, NASA's commercial crew program manager Steve Stitch told the reporters, We talked about a 45-day limit, limited by the crew module batteries on Starliner, and we're in the process of updating that limit. We've been looking at those batteries and their performance in orbit. They're getting recharged by the station, and that risk hasn't really changed. So the risk for the next 45 days is essentially the same as the first 45 days, he stated. In addition, he also stated that Starliner is really rated to remain in orbit for up to 210 days once operational missions start. However, NASA has not yet been certain about the battery performance in orbit because this was only Starliner's third flight in space and its first involving humans. And two well-experienced astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Sunita Williams, were the ones on board. 
Astronauts Wilmore and Williams believe they would return in plenty of time for the June holidays when they took off on June 5th on the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. All they needed to do was test it, dock to the International Space Station for a short while, and return home. It was intended for the entire mission to take around a week. Wilmore told Space.com on May 1st, prior to the launch, that the Navy taught the astronauts skills that are particularly applicable to CFT, such as testing how systems function together. Instead, the series of leaks and malfunctions have caused NASA to indefinitely delay the duo's return. We're not stuck on the ISS, Mark Nappy, Boeing's vice president for its commercial crew program, told reporters in a news conference on June 28th. The crew is not in any danger and there's no increased risk when we decide to bring Sunni and Butch back to Earth. At its White Sands test facility in Las Cruces, New Mexico, NASA said it will begin comprehensive testing of a Starliner thruster this week. In order to determine whether engineers can duplicate the issues and whether the thrusters can be utilized safely to return Williams and Wilmore home, the test thruster will be put through simulated launches, dockings, and landing burns. The news media has been speculating that Williams and Wilmore would be stuck on the station even prior to the most recent press conference. As mentioned earlier, the Starliner is designed to remain up to 210 days, which was actually limited to 45 days, but now the batteries are being recharged as designed, and NASA is looking forward to extending its limit. Extra ground testing will be conducted at the White Sands Test Facility in New Mexico in an attempt to replicate how the RCS thrusters were used throughout the mission, particularly during docking. Williams and Wilmore, in the meantime, are assisting the ISS astronauts with various activities while waiting for the results of the White Sands testing, which will take no less than two weeks. Recent NASA blog articles have detailed the CFD astronauts' ISS maintenance work, which included orbital plumbing for a few days and, most recently, arranging stuff in the permanent multipurpose module. On Monday, July 1st, Williams and Wilmore worked on the Japanese experiment module to disassemble an empty NanoRax CubeSat deployer in preparation for upcoming NanoRax missions, according to NASA officials. As more proof of NASA's faith in Starliner, Williams and Wilmore sought refuge inside the spaceship last week after a Russian satellite broke apart, resulting in orbital debris that may have jeopardized the station. Butch and Suni got in the spacecraft, powered up the vehicle, closed the hatch, and were ready to execute an emergency undock and landing, Stitch says. Ron Epstein, an analyst at Bank of America, says that the problems are part of bigger issues of the aerospace giant. I don't think you can look at it in isolation, he says. Boeing has also encountered issues with its 737 MAX aircraft, including a door that flew off an aircraft earlier this year, and the delivery of two 747s to serve as Presidential Air Force One has been delayed. So what does the future hold for Boeing's Starliner? The first regular flight of the Starliner to the International Space Station is currently slated for February 2025, but it's doubtful whether NASA will certify the new spacecraft in time. Even if it did, it's unlikely to fly more than a few times before NASA removes the space station in 2030. But Boeing's Nappy says the company is fully committed to Starliner and that they're not going to give up. The delay in Boeing's Starliner mission is undeniably disappointing, marking another setback in our quest for routine space travel. However, setbacks are a natural part of pioneering advancements in space technology. Patience and perseverance are key to achieving great milestones in space exploration. We'll keep you guys updated on any new developments and bring you the latest news updates on the Starliner. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel for updates. This is the Space Technician signing off for now, and I'll see you Space Cowboys in the next one.